We're gonna build a parking lot today. What I want you to see, so we're gonna build an extension, sorry, off from this parking lot. This road-based material, when it gets wet, it gets slick. This lumber yard runs a lot of forklifts. I'm gonna teach you how to build a road and more importantly than that, how to estimate it. This is a pretty good size project that can bite you in the butt if you don't do it right. But it's not complicated. It's easy to bid these things. So why are we here? The first thing that I wanna show you is they have two different kinds of materials in this parking lot. They got this rock, which is awesome. I wish the entire parking lot was like that. If it was, they wouldn't need me, right? But then they got the reason they need me, which is this silt. This, when it gets wet, gets slick. So, how do we go ahead and measure building an area and estimate? How do we how do we do an estimate for a job like this? Let's walk you through it step by step because there is a process. Hopefully, my car isn't in the way of that forklift. Um, this is what we have. You see this this muck, this slick stuff. My car okay? Car's okay. That slick stuff, those forklifts that you see in the background, they can't operate on this stuff. So what we gotta do in this situation is we gotta come in here, grade off this entire parking lot. That's one step. Kiss, keep it simple. That's one step, that's the first step. So we're gonna break this, pro this proposal down, this estimate down, step by step by step, so we understand it. We're gonna put that all in the same steps to the customer so they understand it. When they're confident in the proposal, when they're confident in the contract, you're gonna get more work, okay? So we're gonna look at this whole area and we're gonna guesstimate, I don't know what other scientific word to use, how long it's gonna to take to grade this out. That comes through experience. That comes through doing smaller jobs and then working your way up to a bigger project like this. So we're going to guesstimate how many hours we're going to put into this thing and then we're going to qualify those hours on the proposal. So on the proposal we're going to say we're going to grade out the existing subgrade for 15 hours at $105 an hour, something like that. That way if it takes 16 we can charge them an extra hour. If we don't take 15, well then we, you know, we may want to uh, take their proposal and knock it down a little bit and save them some money. Second step is we're going to lay road-based fabric down. Because this is a parking lot, you've seen me do the road-based fabric on patios. This is where it actually applies. This is how we prep these lots. We don't do a soil correction when we come into these things. We just lay the fabric down. We got to de determine the area. I measured the area. 210 linear feet this way, 105 linear feet across. So we know how many square feet we have, which converts to square yards, which is how we buy road-based material. We lay that down and then we bring in class five. And I'm gonna go over the formula with, with you on that back at the office. All right, before we get too crazy deep into the numbers, I'm gonna show you the actual proposal that I've turned into this company. At this point, what I want you to do is pause the video and look carefully over these numbers. This is the actual proposal that they receive and you can see how I've broken it down into four separate categories, okay? And what that does is that gives me confidence in my numbers, but it also clarifies the proposal to the, uh, to the customer and it helps them wrap their head around it. You want to avoid that lump sum magic mystery number because it doesn't really give the customer any confidence in what you're doing and what they're spending tens of thousands of dollars on. So let's actually break down how we do the calculations. Now on the first step of this proposal, we have grade the sub base and prep for new base material. That's strictly labor. That's strictly going into that tannish, rock, clayey subsoil and creating a crown. And I want to explain to you what a crown on a parking lot is. The parking lot currently looks more like this, kind of flat, nothing. And what we want to do is we want to create a peak in the middle and then we want the parking lot to gently roll to both sides. So when water comes down, it will run away from the parking lot as quickly as possible. Your road, almost every road you drive on will have a crown on it. And we want to create that in the parking lots. We want to get the water to run away. We don't want pooling or ponding. This is how you do it. 
this this site that you just seen was a perfect example of an easy one to create the crown on but that starts with the sub base so that starts with creating that perfect pitch going down and away to both sides the next step on this case because we're not doing a soil correction, because we don't have perfect conditions to just lay class five down, we were going to be putting down filter fabric. Remember we talked about that. And we needed to know how many linear feet, or actually technically how many square feet of filter fabric. Remember those numbers we went over, it was 210 times 105, which gives us 22,050 square feet that is the number we need for the filter fabric then we've got to price out filter fabric we've got to make a phone call and say hey I need 22,050 square feet of filter fabric how much is that gonna cost me in this case it was a dollar seventy five was it a dollar oh, no it was hundred and seventy five dollars per roll we needed ten rolls I apologize um, and so we knew we, we had $1,750 just in filter fabric. Now, you've got to get those rolls to the site. Then you've got to lay those rolls out. You've probably got a good portion of a day spent just getting that right. And then you're going to probably staple the joints on those rolls. So where one piece of fabric goes, the next piece of fabric lays over the top of it like this. You're going to put a staple right there to make sure that it doesn't split and separate. And it doesn't pop up through this through the base material okay so in this estimate what I have is I have placed filter fabric over the sub base 10 rolls now watch this 10 rolls at $370 now why do I tell them how many rolls I'm putting in place well because what if I run short I don't want to be if I was just a lump sum where it's a place filter fabric over sub base I'm on the hook but now I'm off the hook my butt is safe because of this number, because I put 10 rolls in place. Now, if I need 11 rolls, I just go, hey, I need another roll. It's going to be an extra $370. That covers my labor. That covers delivery fee. That covers the material. But what if I only need eight or nine rolls? You just shut your mouth. <laughs> you just put the money in your pocket for the extra two rolls that you didn't need. You know you're going to need, you've done the math, you know you're going to need about 10 rolls, but if for some reason you don't need quite that many, perfect. You're still going to charge them $3,700. So that's how you do a lump sum and you protect your own hiney. Here it gets a little more complicated. Now we've got to do the math for the class 5. We are going to be importing 561 tons of recycled class 5. Now let's go over this math. I'm going to put the formula up on the screen right about here. I actually don't know if it'll show up there or not. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but here's the formula. Here's how you calculate that. You take the length times the width, then times the depth. Now in this case, we're going to put 6 inches of class 5. So your formula would be, if I remember the numbers right, 210 times 105, which is your length times width, your depth is six inches or half a foot, so it'd be 0 0.5. So 210 times 105 times 0 0.5. I gotta quickly figure out what that comes out to. 210, because I wanna make sure that as I'm speaking, I get the right numbers to you, times 0.5. So we have 11,025 square feet. But now we want square yards. No, we want cubic yards, I apologize. Too many numbers and I am Polish so I have a built-in excuse for everything I do so we're going to convert cubic feet to cubic yards by dividing that number which is 11,025 by 27 that is your conversion factor so now we know we have 408.33 cubic yards of class 5 going into this site to this parking lot that doesn't help you for nothing, okay? That is the start. 408.33 cubic yards isn't the answer, okay? I got my butt burned. One of my estimators did a Menard Superstore, and he forgot to convert cubic yards to metric tons. 
and I lost tens of thousands of dollars on that job because of that. So don't have this mistake happen to you. There's one more step, guys and gals. You take that 408.33 and you multiply it by 1.3, I don't know, 5, 6, 7, it doesn't make a difference. That converts it to metric tons. Okay? In this case, uh, I come up with 551 metric tons on my calculator here. In the proposal, I have 561. So when I did the math earlier, I probably multiplied it by 1.36 or 1.37. It doesn't matter. But you almost have a third increase from a cubic yard to a cubic ton. And you can see where 408 cubic yards, if you purchase, if you put that in and mistakenly went to the pit to buy that, that would convert to 561 tons, and that would be a huge deficit for you guys, okay? So now, in this case, let's calculate how much that material is going to cost us. We know we got 561 tons. Hey, one thing I want to, be, I want to show you, too, on this before I get ahead of it, 561 tons. If you pause this and look carefully, you can see we're covered again. We're not importing 562 tons. We're not importing 600 tons. We're not saying we are going to import class five and create a base for the parking lot. We're not saying that. What we are saying very clearly is we are importing 561 tons of recycled class five base material. We are safe. There is no fear in that number. There's only a cushion for me to make money. Because if I come up and I can, if I'm able to uh, class five that parking lot for 540 tons or 530 tons, I'm still charging them for 561 tons. That's my maximum amount. And that charge is $7,854. So what we're going to do, $7,854 divided by 561. We're charging $14 a ton for class five. How we break that down is the material itself costs, I think it's like $7.50 for the class five plus tax, so probably a little over $8 per ton. So let's just call it $8 per ton. So $6 per ton is what it costs me to get it to the site. Now in this case, I'm importing it with my own trucks. So I'm putting that $6 a ton in my pocket for labor and fuel. It's not really total profit, but there is profit built into it for me. Now, if you were hiring a trucking company to bring this in, you might want to raise your price a little bit because you want to make money on every component of the job. You don't want to make money just here and have nothing over here. Everything on this job. You're, cal you're doing the, the calculations. You're making the phone calls. You're coordinating this project. You deserve to make money on every component of the job without feeling guilty. You should feel good about it because you're providing a service. You're doing something for the customer. There's no doubt about it. So make sure you build profit into just the purchasing and transporting of the class five. Last line, grade and compact the class five base material. This is where it's all you. This is where if you have a skid loader and compacting, you can rent a plate packer you can rent a packer but technically you really don't need to do a whole lot of compaction when it's just six inches of material just importing it and having the skid loader drive over it that's called compression compaction okay and what you can do is as you grade out that parking lot you have the dump trucks roll over what you've already created and then they dump and they're rolling over the base material here that you've already laid down every time they drive they're packing the heck out of it. So if you don't have a packer, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Here's a, a, a fun little story. I was building the Menard Superstore in Maple Grove, and a company called Krauss Anderson had a douchebag supervisor. I can't remember his name. But this guy was just a tool in every sense of the word. And we were using compression compaction for the footings on the building. And he came up and he was furious with me. He's like, you can't compact a building like that. You can't get, you can't get, I think we had to have 95% standard proctor density on that job site. You can't do that. 
and I just kind of stood there and I waited for him, you know, the steam to quit rising out of his ears. And I said, just test it. Just get it tested and let's see where we're at. And what I was doing with compression compaction is I had an old dump truck. I mean, this thing probably, I don't know how I got it out to the site. And I mounded the dirt on this dump truck. And all I did was drive that dump truck around the footings of the building over and over and over again. And when we had that tested, we reached almost 100, I think it was 107% standard proctor density. We had to, I think we had to make 95 or 97. We were way over on car com compaction. That's how effective compression compaction is. You don't always need a vibratory packer. Um, sometimes you don't want one, but I'm getting off hand. So just the weight, getting back to the point, just the weight of the truck itself is going to pack it. The weight of your skid loader, as long as you're not using a track skid loader, if you got a tired skid loader, even a track skid loader is going to compact it. Don't, don't fool yourself. You just got to put it in thinner lifts. Um, $8,500, how many hours do I have? Now that is a lump sum. I am taking a little bit of a risk there, but I know my numbers pretty well, so I'm not overly concerned. 8,500 divided by 105, which is what I want for a skid loader, 80 hours of work. There's not 80 hours of work in there, but, um, you know, I suppose we could work slower. It doesn't make a difference because I didn't break the hours down on this because I'm pretty confident in it. Uh, let's see, how much is this parking lot then? So if we add up all of these numbers in this parking lot that we looked at together, we have $3,900 for the sub-based rating, $3,700 for the uh, filter fabric, $7,854 to bring in class 5, and $8,500 to actually have a nice skid loader just go out and grade that class 5. I gotta set up a laser too, don't get me wrong. $23,954. Um, I do have to create a crown. I have to set up a laser. I have to know what I'm doing. I, uh, on the class five itself, I have to create that pitch that we created with the sub base. Um, and then I gotta make sure that I don't have any, any soft spots or loose spots. So, you know, I guess 80 hours actually is a pretty realistic number because we are going to make sure that we don't rush through it and that we hit every component of this job so that when we walk away, we walk away once, okay? We probably would never get a call back except saying thank you and now we're ready to lay the asphalt down at that point. Um, so that's how you bid a parking lot. It's as simple as that. I hope this video has helped you. Please subscribe for updates. Um, I love you guys' feedback. You know that. You hear it, blah, 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 all the time. You hear me telling you this stuff, but it really is important. I read everything you guys send me. Uh, unfortunately, this is the height of the busy season. I haven't been able to get back to everybody as much as I'd like to, but I'm still reading it, and every chance I get, I do respond to you guys. I want to hear from you. I hope this has helped. Get back to work. Don't you got something better than watch this? Catch you later.